In the 2007-8 NBA season, this is what the standings looked like in the Western Conference. You needed a ridiculous 50 wins to make the 8th seed of the playoffs. The 48-34 and 34 Warriors, the same team that toppled the almighty Dallas Mavericks in the previous playoffs, were not even good enough to make the playoffs this time. In the 2009-10 season, this is what the standings looked like. Once again, you see a 50-win Oklahoma City Thunder as the mere 8th seed of the West. Back then and now, it's very common to see the bottom of the West still have a winning record and still give the top seeds a difficult time. You can point to these two seasons as having the strongest conferences ever. But I say, actually, it's this year. The 2023-24 season that truly is the toughest, deepest conference in the history of the sport. Unlike the East, where there's a bunch of good teams, but many of them have no future. How's it going folks? My name's Andy, and let's get started. And speaking of NBA teams with no future, maybe you can be the one to turn it around. Do you have aspirations to work in sports management, or are you dissatisfied with your current career? Well, you can make your dreams a reality. I've been sponsored by Southern New Hampshire University's online sports management program. If you want to turn your passion into a degree, SNHU is the place to be. You'll learn all about the principles of sports management and how to gather and analyze data. SNHU can help you prepare for your dream job. Whether you want to be an athletic director or a sports marketing manager, they'll help you get a foot in the door with internship opportunities. And you'll get access to their network of graduates. As someone who has worked with Bleacher Report writers in the past, which helped boost my YouTube channel at the start, Oh, I know the importance of building strong connections. SNHU was also voted one of the country's most innovative universities. If you want more details, you can go to snhu.edu slash andyhoops, or click the link in the description below to see if you qualify for their sports management program. You might be eligible for financial aid, or have previous college credits that could fast-track your degree at SNHU. Click my link to get started. This era of the West can be labeled as a transition period. While the great young teams are trying to make a name for themselves, the talent and experience of the old guard is still relevant. As seen in the previous 2023 playoffs, where the Warriors and Lakers both won their first round series against higher seeded teams with better records, this year the bottom of the West is even more ridiculous. For example, three teams that were fighting at the bottom of the playoff race for most of the year, the Lakers, the Suns, and Warriors, combined for a total of 83 All-Star selections and 55 All-NBA selections. They all have multiple superstars or former superstars, an absurd number of championships and playoff experience under their belt. This is your reward for finishing as a top seed in the Western Conference, your reward is LeBron James and Anthony Davis, or Kevin Durant, Devin Booker, and Bradley Beal. The Warriors, even though they got knocked out, they're the greatest 10 seed in NBA history in terms of record. They were literally 10 games above 500 as a 10 seed. Then you have some young upstart teams like the Mavs, the Pelicans, and Kings, all with very prominent stars of their own. Yet, it was a toss-up to even make the playoffs this year. Even the Western Conference teams that didn't make the playoffs, like the injured Grizzlies, they clearly have the talent to be a 50-plus win team once again. Or the Houston Rockets, with Alperon Sengun putting up all-star caliber numbers, and Jalen Green popping off after having another kid. And of course, the big man, down in San Antonio. It seems like every single team in the West is either contending, or they're headed in the right direction to become contenders you gotta expect them to improve in the following seasons, thus ramping up the strength of the conference even further. Most importantly, these guys, oh, you can tell they're hungry and they're motivated. The divide between the East and West will get even larger as the years go by. Unexpected Contenders While most of these playoff teams were expected to contend, surprisingly, it's two of the top three seeds who were not expected to. According to preseason odds, the Oklahoma City Thunder and Minnesota Timberwolves were both expected to win around 44 games. If they finished as their projected record indicated, they both would have been out of the playoffs. They shattered their expectations. In all honesty, nobody expected them to make this kind of leap. They were both play-in teams in the year prior, 
So to go from the bottom of the playoffs to competing for the best record in the conference? It's certainly a sight to behold. You look at the records of these three teams at a glance, and you wouldn't think winning this number of games is that impressive. After all, plenty of teams have won 57 games before, but it represents something bigger. It signifies how different each of these top three seeds are. The way their teams are built, in combination with all the talent, have made it very hard for anyone to make the finals, because they have to play against such different playstyles. For example, let's say the Lakers match up well against OKC's smaller lineups. That doesn't mean they match up well against Denver, who are bigger with more physical, rugged interior play. Or even the Phoenix Suns, with lethal scorers at the wings in the mid-range who will kill you if you're not prepared. You can't build your team to counter all of these guys, and because every team you face will kill you in different ways, with the talent to back it up, you have to give up something. Let's take a look at the first unexpected contender, the Thunder. Their timeline accelerated faster than we all imagined. The craziest stat I saw was this. By the end of the 2023-24 season, the Oklahoma City Thunder's starting lineup had an average age of 22.6. The North Carolina Tar Heels have a starting lineup with an average age of 22.2. I mean, can you imagine this? The fact that this young team finished with the first seed in the toughest, deepest conference ever, it's unfathomable. Not only are they the second youngest team in the entire league, but they have one of the youngest coaches. Mark Dagnalt was a longtime member of the Thunder organization, and he earned his spot as head coach after a successful campaign in the G League. Everyone's aware of Shea, Chet, and the leap their young players made, but Mark Dagnalt is widely considered to be one of the NBA's brightest minds. Heck, he was even briefly name-dropped in the podcast with LeBron and JJ Redick, where they both gave him props. Have you spent any time with Mark Dagnall, by the way? No, bro. He's, he's ridiculous. He's so good. No, he's, he's, he's so good. Yeah, he's on his shit. Perhaps his biggest talent is recognizing a player's skills and putting them in the right position to make a positive impact to win. He was previously a developmental coach after all, and he had a hand in fostering the current generation of young talent in OKC. It's not only his smarts and wit, but his charisma and ability to relate to every player and rally them toward success. This season was more than they ever hoped for. The Wolves, on the other hand, have dominated in a different way. Many of their players have been established in the league for a while, and it's taken the organization a long time to build a competent roster. Now, they finally found their identity. The Wolves are the number one ranked defense in the league, by far. You might say, oh, that's usual for a defense anchored by Rudy Gobert. The Utah Jazz had many seasons of being a top two or top three defensive team, so what makes the Wolves defense so special? Well, their defense isn't solely because of Gobert. For the Wolves, they have so many disciplined individual defenders. Everyone knows about OG Ananobi or Herb Jones, and people tend to say they are the best wing defenders in the league. But the Wolves have Jaden McDaniels, the NBA's best kept secret. In the past several seasons, Jaden McDaniels has been near the top in matchup difficulty, meaning he almost always defends the opposing team's best player. Whether it's a point guard or even a power forward, McDaniels is the defensive stopper the Wolves rely on. Then, of course, you have the Denver Nuggets, led by the best player in the league. These three teams fought tooth and nail all season long to claim the top seed of the West, and to do so with completely different game plans, it makes it so much harder for a single team to have an advantage against every one of their playstyles. More desirable teams. On top of having more talent and more high potential prospects, the West also boasts cities that are more desirable to live in for athletes. Typically, warmer climates are the biggest attraction. Players gravitate towards better weather. The West has always attracted the most marquee free agents due to location. But it's not just location that's desirable. Most Western Conference teams are managed substantially better than the East, and every team employs a front office that's trying to win or making progress to win in the future. In the East, however, you have teams like the Chicago Bulls, or Washington Wizards, the Brooklyn Nets, Atlanta Hawks, and Charlotte Hornets. They don't really have a concrete direction. They're waiting to hit the jackpot in the lottery, and that's all they can do. 
This leads to a domino effect. Good players want to join good teams. Good young players want to play with other good young players. Does a player prefer to play with Victor Wembanyama or Mikhail Bridges? In recent years, we saw Kevin Durant move west from Brooklyn to Phoenix. Bradley Beal saw this and was like, oh damn, I want to join him too. Kyrie Irving moved west from Brooklyn to Dallas, and he said playing with Luka was the main reason he wanted to go. Paul George, Kawhi Leonard, James Harden, and LeBron before that, they all went west as well. Is it surprising that they did? Of course not. Did they inadvertently create the most overpowered conference ever? <laughs> oh, hell yeah. Comparisons to the past So, in this entire video, I've been trying to support my claim that the 2024 Western Conference is the strongest conference in the history of basketball. It's a bold claim, for sure. We all know this isn't the first time the Western Conference has been absurdly strong. It's been this way for, uh, honestly, most of my life. From the early 2000s to the late 2000s to the Warriors dynasty, the West has always been stronger. However, I want to compare this conference to 2008 and 2010. But even during those years back then, the bottom of the conference was weaker. In 2024, the 11 seed Rockets went 41 and 41, and up until the final two weeks of the season, they still had a shot to make the playoffs. By record, they are the best 11 seed in NBA history. <laughs> they should hang a banner for that. Compared to the Warriors' championship years, where the top seeds had better records, there wasn't nearly as much parity compared to this season. The Warriors were heavily favored every year, and especially when they got Durant. Now, the talent is spread out more evenly, which makes every single playoff team a threat. Nevertheless, I'm convinced there hasn't been a stronger conference than the one we just witnessed. But anyway, what are your thoughts? Can you name a single conference in history that comes close to matching the insane dominance of 2024? Let me know in the comments your thoughts. Thank you all so much for watching, I hope you all enjoyed the video, and of course, as always, I'll see you next time. Peace!